Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. These are the projects we're going to be making with the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for August 2021. This is everything in the kit and we're going to do a quick walkthrough of everything in the kit and then we're going to jump in and create three watercolor projects. Now I'm super excited about this kit. I haven't watercolored watercolor in a long time and so let's take a look. We're gonna, there's three goodie bags so we'll start off with our stamp set. Stamp set is a four by six stamp set this month and a lot of encouraging sentiments in here. And on the reverse side is nice, nice because there's a little uh, color guide or a swatch sheet that tells you exactly how to create um, certain colors using the watercolor inks that are in your kit this month. Now, I thought that was pretty fabulous um, having the three primary colors in the kit because Three, the primary colors, you can create so many different colors with them. And then there's the bottles in your watercolor inks are droplets. So you just add four drops, two drops, and that color guide is so helpful. You get two fancy dies here. You get the love and the heart hands. Love can be separated, but I chose to keep mine together because it's perfectly spaced. And then this is your sentiment. Um, all of them are sentiments, but you do get one heart, which is nice. It goes with all of the sentiments. And then we're going to take a look at our next goodie bag. This one has your inks and then your stencil and I thought was pretty fabulous. It has a background stamp. This is a 5.4 inch background stamp, not quite six inches. Um, but I love background stamps like this because they're kind of timeless. You can use them for any occasion, Christmas, Easter, everyday birthdays, because it's just a basic shape and I love it. You also get this fun stencil, and I think the same would go to, with the stencil too. The stencil will fit a mini slimline card. It actually measures um, five and a half inches by, no, five and a quarter inches by six and a half inches. And these are your liquid watercolor grips, guys. They are neat because they are full-size bottles. And again, there's droplets. Um, the lid has the droplet dropper on it. I kind of felt like I was creating a science experiment, <laughs> but it makes it so handy because the back will say one drops, two drops again, and the drop, the droplet bottle just makes it so easy to create the colors that you see in the background. Primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. With those, you can create basically almost any color of the rainbow. So I think that's so neat that you get these. In fact, everything that you see today are, are kits um, you can use again and again and again. It, the kit just doesn't go away after you use it. It's they're, they're stash builders. You get six sheets of watercolor paper. This is eight and a half by five and a half inch sheets. Um, I took some scratch watercolor card stock from my stash and I wanted to swatch these out to show you the colors, how vibrant they are. Um, nice thing about liquid watercolors is the vibrancy of them. They tend to keep but more uh, vibrant than your, your pan sets. At least that's my opinion. Um, I'm, um, the colors are yellow, indigo, and then you get red is pink, or actually it's pink. Pink is pink. <laughs> and then you get uh, the blue is indigo. There's your dandelion here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and grab a towel so I can wipe off my brush. I'm just using my water brush. It already had water in it so I could spread out the color, but you can see how vibrant it is. I love liquid watercolors. This is your indigo, so you can intensify it and then soften or fade it with more water. And the same goes with our pink ink. So pretty, and you can see how colorful it is. Now, if you mix two together, the indigo, and actually if you mix the dandelion with the indigo, you get your green and you mix the purple or the indigo with the pink, you get a real pretty purple. So fun, huh? <laughs> and if you mix all of them together, you can create a real pretty skin tone or brown. I'm gonna add a little drop of dandelion on the bottom and mix the pink with the dandelion and then you get this real pretty corally orange. Um, so more pink would be add more corally color. Less pink would be a more orangey color. So I I was looking at my swatch sheet and I thought, wow, wow, that's really very pretty colors. In fact, we are gonna use this little swatch sheet in one of our cards. I love the way this turned out so much. So we're gonna set this aside to dry. I wanna see if my level fit on here though. 
and it fits perfectly on my little I just grabbed a scratch piece of watercolor cardstock so it worked out great okay so those are your inks we're gonna jump in and do some backgrounds before we start creating our cards I already adhered half of my um, watercolor cardstock to my Misty. I just taped it down with my tape runner. I found this easier. I'm going over my background stamp with my Versafine, my Versamark ink. It's a watermark ink. And we'll ink it up a few times. Now make sure you treat your paper with your anti-static powder tool. Both sides of this um, watercolor cardstock is textured. So you want to stamp a few times just to get a good impression. I'm going over my stamped image with some white embossing powder and then we're going to go ahead and melt the embossing powder. Now I wanted to add a little bit of something else in my background so I'm bringing in some of my Distress Resist Spray. This is from Ranger and I'm just adding some my spray bottle on this actually clogged up so I like to take the cap off and we're going to add a little bit of splatter using the Distress Resist Spray here in our background. Just a little bit. You could probably hardly see it. When I took the lid off, some of the, the spray had crusted up around my... That's how old <laughs> my bottle is. But I'm just adding a little bit of splatter in the background. And then I have this little tray. I think I picked it up at the dollar store, guys. And we're going to add some color. First, indigo. And you could do this on, a, on an acrylic block but I would do it in small batches. You don't want to run over. Next is our dandelion. Third is our pink. And then we're gonna create a rainbow background. I brought in my little swatch because I wanted the same colors that I did on my swatching. So we're gonna start off with our, our yellow and I'm using my water brush and some water and I'm just adding color to the very bottom. Now you can, it the colors soak in the paper super fast guys so you kind of want to work a little bit fast um i'm just adding keeping that white space in between the yellow and the blue this way we can kind of bring them both together to create our green we'll add our indigo over our dandelion and so now we have yellow green and blue we're going to pull up our blue just a little bit more so we can mix some of our pink ink and create a purple in between. So let's spread this out a little more. And I decided, since it's absorbing really, really fast in the paper, I decided to spray my paper with my spray bottle. Now when I did this, it kind of lifted my paper. So you want to hold it down if you do this or tape it down would probably be even better, guys. Okay, we're mixing our pink with our indigo to create our purple. And I think this is so fun. Just doing a lot of swooshing with it until I'm happy with each of the colors. Pulling up some of that pink to the top. And then we're gonna add some more of our, our indigo after we do this. I think I want a stronger purple here. And you can see since we embossed our background that our pattern in the background is just standing out and looking so pretty. Well, purple looks good. We're going to move along and create a little corally color. Add a little water and add some of our dandelion kind of overlapping. We're going to take dandelion all the way to the top. Add some of our pink to create our orangish color. This is so therapeutic. I just love doing this. If there's no right or wrong reason, guys. You could do this actually at a diagonal too, and I think that would be pretty. Or you could go vertical too. I think that would be nice. I'm going to strengthen up my green on the very bottom. So to do that, I found it's better just to create a green ink. So we're adding our dandelion. I'm going to intensify our dandelion on the bottom. And then I'm going to tap my brush in my indigo ink just once. And then we're going to add that to our dandelion. Now, of course, I'm not using the coloring guide. I'm pretty good with colors only because um, as a baker, I created all different colors of frostings. And so <laughs> um, I'm, I'm used to mixing. But if you guys have trouble, you know, creating colors, use your color guide. It's so, so helpful. And I think that looks wonderful. Love that. Now that is one panel. Now my panel is very, very saturated, guys. I suggest 
setting this aside to dry, air dry, and this way your paper doesn't warp as much, but I'm gonna speed up the drying process using my heat gun, so that, that's just gonna make it warp a little bit more. Now we are gonna do some some rainbow tie-dye looking with our stencil. I went ahead and sprayed by the back of my stencil with pixie spray. Now two things, my pixie spray is almost gone, um, so it didn't have the tackiness that I really wanted. The outcome turned out pretty fabulous, but pixie spray, um, I'm almost out, so it didn't have the tackiness that I desired. But also, when you do do stenciling on watercolor cardstock, since there is a little bit of texture, you do get the chance of your watercolor inks going underneath your stencil. So that's why I thought we would do a tie-dye effect. So if it did that, it would just kind of go with the theme. We're starting off with our pink, and I'm going to create a side rainbow kind of a color following the lines of our stencil. First we used pink. Next, I did create my purple by adding a little bit of pink with a little bit of our indigo. We're gonna add pink and then create our purple ink and just go, and it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. I'm just actually add it, the paper absorbs really fast. You'll find this out. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my blue to the purple, kind of overlapping as I go. Such a beautiful, beautiful blue and we're again I was so happy with the outcome it really does look like a tie-dye look after we do this we're gonna dab off the excess with our towel wipe off our brush and then we're bringing in some green ink this is the green we created from our first background and I think we're gonna have to make some more so to do that I'm gonna grab my dandelion ink We'll add some more to our little our palette and then add a, just a drop of blue and our green is nice and vibrant and we're overlapping this against our indigo once more. Nice thing about watercolors, there's no right or wrong reason or right or wrong way to watercolor, I should say. <laughs> After our green, we're gonna add our yellow, just following around that curve. I should change my water out, but the, the camera's rolling, so I'm gonna continue. <laughs> We're gonna add a little more green to our yellow, kind of make it a little more vibrant. After yellow, we are gonna, I created an orange with my dandelion and my pink. We're gonna add our orange. Go over, kind of overlapping our yellow again. And I think we're gonna just have enough for the orange here. And then our last color, we're gonna go over it and end it with the pink. We began it with the pink, we're gonna end it with the pink. Dab off the excess here. And pick up our pink. I love the way this turned out, it's pretty neat. Kind of really goes with, with the, the bubble love too. Kind of a tie-dye look. Okay, and that's it. And if you wanted to add some white splatters or put some of your Distress Resist spray on this too, I think that would look nice. But I'm gonna leave this just as it is because when we removed the stencil, some of that ink kind of crawled underneath and it really created a fun tie-dye look. Let's dab off the excess here and we're gonna do the reveal. And I think that looks lovely. <laughs> <laughs> That's our background number two. Now while we're at it, I stamped the I Love You on the same watercolor cardstock, and then I heat embossed it with white embossing powder. I just created a, a rainbow right over those letters, and then I also stamped the heart three times on a strip of the watercolor cardstock, and we're going to create a rainbow with this. Now I'm not going to use these. I thought I could use them on a project, but I ended up not using it. But this is another way you could create a card with. If you put the three I love you's on the center of a black card stock, I think that would look really pretty. We'll add our purple over the heart, add a little bit of our pink after the purple, add a little bit of orange, we'll add some yellow, 
I did clean my water out, but it 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 doesn't last clean long. <laughs> Add some green. So these are nice and, and good to go. I just wanted to show you another option. I left this in only because even though we're not using them today, this is another option on how to use your, your watercolors. And if you have them on strips, you can let them dry and your hands don't get ickied up either. You just take a towel and go over your embossed area and then we're, you're good to go. Now, since we have all the colors out, it's so easy to create a brown. Um, I have another piece of watercolor cardstock. The brown, it actually tells you how to create it on the back side. You can follow that. Um, I, like I said, I'm pretty good with the coloring. So I'm just going to add some blue to the orange and it will create a little bit of red. It will create a nice brown tone. This way we can die cut out our heart hands. I'm going to add some water to that brown. It's a little bit rich. And then we're going to go ahead and just ink up the lower half of our cardstock here. And again, it absorbs the paper really fast. So you want to work kind of fast. I'm just doing some swishy lines. And it looks like we're out of ink, so we're going to need to create a little bit more. I don't think my heart hands are going to fit over it. We're going to grab it and see if we can fit the length of it. And I think we need to add a little bit more. So I'm just going to add some of my purple to my green. And I think we're going to have to darken it up a bit. Purple and green is going to create a darker brown, but I think it will work. So we're going to add some water and then we are good to go. Maybe a little bit darker on the ends will just create a little bit of shaded mark. And again, skin tone's the limit, guys. That's the nice thing about these colors. Okay, that's going to work out perfect for my heart hands. So that's done. Now while we have that brown ink that we created on our little palette, we are going to go ahead take a towel wipe off our ink from here and I'm going to stamp my sentiment um, two of them actually on another piece of watercolor cardstock I stamped I'm not going to use both of them but I wanted an option um, I'm going to stamp let's see I know I want you color my world so I stamped that with my watermark ink and then I added white embossing powder to it. You can see here if I add my brown right over it and it's just going to resist that watercolor ink and I love the way this looks. We're going to do the same thing to our sentiment uh, on the bottom. The sentiment on the bottom says strength, lies, and differences. I end up not using that for my projects today but I just love the way this looks with the watercolor over the top. We're going to eventually block off the bottom one and then use our dies after we um, dryer panels we're going to do a little bit of die cutting so let's dry this with the heat gun and then we are going to finish up these are all of our panels that we created so far now we're going to do a little die cutting love the way these turned out and you can see they're dry now i used my heat gun and it did warp the paper a little bit but you can see how vibrant those colors are it's just stunning i'm going to take the love die and we're going to die cut out love in our little original swatch sheet and we're gonna use a negative piece of this, not the positive. So you can make another card with the positive pieces. Just went ahead and grabbed, in case I wanted to use the center of the O, I grabbed it just so I didn't lose it. Now we're gonna take the heart hands, die cut out them out. And I didn't know this, that this did this, but your heart hands, guys, stay connected in your cardstock. How fantastic is that? Just push your hands up behind and it automatically creates dimension. How fun is this? I love that there's score marks on the left and right. I mean, it's, it makes it so easy to pop up or not so much dimension. You can mail it easier without adding foam adhesive because the, the, the hands are already done for you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and trim down my rainbow I love yous. I trimmed them down to three and a quarter inches. So they're good to go. Now I'm going to take one of my nesting circle infinity dies and we're going to die cut out our sentiment that says you color my world. 
and we'll just tape this down, run this through the die cutting machine. Now after we have everything die cut, there's our heart hands. I did separate them. Um, I have a different plan for those, but we I love the way the background looks, but we're gonna go one step further. That's why the video is a little bit long because of the process. I am gonna bring in another background stamp for my stash. This is the Hero Arts Script Bold Prints background. I love the scripty font on here. I'm gonna add this to my Misty and we're gonna add some scripty letters in the background of all of our pieces here. I think it's gonna create just another effect kind of going with the, the free flowing watercolor look. I'm taping my background down to my Misty. I had to remove my, my mouse pad and then we'll tape it down and then I'm gonna ink up my background stamp with Versamark ink. Now you wanna make sure your panels are completely dry to do this and you also want to make sure that you treat your paper with your anti-static powder tool. Now I'm doing this after the fact because I want since we watercolored over the top, I didn't want um, a white print in the background. I wanted a rainbow print. So we're gonna use clear embossing powder after we ink this up. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. We'll ink this up, press down really good, remove that posty tape, <laughs> and then go over our background with clear embossing powder. I think this turned out so fabulous. I just love all the, the layers that this has. Tap off the excess, bring in the heat gun and melt it. And you'll see the print is not bold like it would be if you did it first where it would be white. The, um, since we're using clear, it just kind of floats over the top. I just, and it doesn't take away from your, your circle white embossed background. Basically it's not competing um, with your background panel. And I like that. We're going to do the same thing to our other background. And then, you know what? I went crazy. I went ahead and did my sentiments and also my heart hands. So we did all, all of our backgrounds like this guys. Okay. With that being said, we are going to go, my panel's pretty, pretty toughened up. <laughs> so to help flatten it, uh, we're going to put some foam adhesive behind it. I have these adhesive backed foam sheets and it really does help when you're going to adhere background panels after all the, the water coloring and heat drying you did with it. Just going to press it down really good. And as I'm going to do this, I'm removing my uh, anti-static powder from the top of my background. Now I have my card base. I created it using um, just some white card stock. It's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And you can see it flattens it quite a bit. There are some areas um, that, are, uh, that are a little bit warped, but when you do watercoloring, you're not gonna have a perfectly flat card. Uh -huh. Next, I'm taking my sentiment. We're gonna adhere it to a slightly larger white circle that I used uh, with the same circle dies. This is gonna go in the middle of our circle back or our background here. And after I added the scripty print to the sentiment here, it kind of reminded me of like a wood grain and I love my wood grain. So it turned out really good. Now we, I thought it needed something else. So I'm taking my Hero Arts Intense Black Ink. We're gonna stamp the heart that's in the stamp set on some white cardstock. And then I'm gonna use my scissors and just fussy cut around it. We're gonna add that just above our sentiment. As we add this, we are gonna pop it up with foam adhesive and then we're gonna add a little embellishment, some subtle embellishment. I'm using my Hero Hues um, enamel dots. These are the clear enamel dots. So it looks like little water droplets. It's hard to see in the camera, but I like the effect that this gives. Kind of goes with the watercolor background. Now to sparkle up my black heart, it, I wanted to add some shimmer, of course. So the great way to do this is you just bring in some of your glossy accents, go over your black stamped heart area and then we're gonna sparkle it up using some glitter, some chunky glitter that's kind of has the iridescent hue to it. This is a great, kind of creates a really pretty embellishment. I do this often and I love the effect of this. Just add some of our glitter and I think it's soft, but I love the way that turned out. Now for my next card, we're gonna go ahead and trim down the right side of this. We're gonna take a half of an inch off of the right side. I like that the left side has white. 
um, on the edge. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna adhere this to my card base and then the half inch that we trimmed off, I'm gonna cover my card base with black cardstock. So the black will be on the left and then our panel will be on the right. We just adhered that to another A2 size card front. Now I'm bringing in those circle dies again we're gonna go ahead and die cut out a piece of vellum. And I decided to go big or go home <laughs> with the circles. This is the second largest in the nesting infinity a circle die set. I'm gonna take my classic layering vellum and die cut out a vellum piece. And I did trim off the left side, um, about a half of an inch I trimmed off. And I went ahead and popped up my heart hands and added that to my half circle. I stamped my sentiment directly on my vellum. This time I used my Versafine Onyx Black ink. This sentiment says, thank you for being you. Um, I did go over it, my stamped sentiment with my clear embossing powder and then we'll melt it. That's the nice thing about the Hero Arts Classic Layering Vellum is the weight of it. It embosses very nice. We're gonna go ahead and flip over our heart hands. I'm gonna pop it up with some foam adhesive we're just going to go behind our heart hands. This way you can't see the foam adhesive. And we're going to place this lining up the edge of our vellum. We're going to line it up to the edge of our black cardstock. And that, there's a lot going on in the card, but it does look kind of clean. So we're going to leave it as it goes. And for our last card, it's going to be a pretty quick and easy card. I, like I said, we're not going to use the I love you rainbow sentiments but I do want to use the negative piece here. I'm going to adhere this to some black cardstock so it just stands out. When you have some bright colors and add black, I think it just makes it really bold and vibrant. I am going to trim down my, my swatch piece a little bit, and then we're also going to trim down our black cardstock. I wanted the top to have just a little bit of black peeking out, and then I wanted the bottom to have more of the black showing. Now before we pop our love up, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment on our watercolor cardstock. I think a misty would have been better for this only because the texture that we have on our watercolor cardstock, um, I wasn't sure if I would, was gonna mess it up or not. But I'm lining this up on my card base and then I'm gonna stamp, carefully, <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm gonna stamp sending over to the left. I stamped it halfway on my watercolor cardstock, and then I also stamped it on my card base. Basically what we're gonna do is line it up. I went ahead and popped up my Love watercolor cardstock with foam adhesive, so it does have dimension there, um, and just line it up. This way we have a full sending that's halfway through the watercolor cardstock and halfway through our card base. We're not gonna do much to this card. We're just gonna add a little heart. I went through my my enamel dots and found a glittery yellow heart. We're gonna put that in the center of the O in the love. And I think that just is clean too. I love the way this turned out. I was thinking the hearts would be really cute in there too if you wanna make a birthday card. But that is my third card using the My Monthly Hero um, kit for August. 2021. Here's a look at all three cards. I hope this gives you some easy ideas on how to watercolor and use this month's kit. I think it's so fun and I love the vibrancy of the watercolor inks. I just think that the liquid watercolors are just fabulous to work with. Have a great day guys. Thanks so much for joining me. We will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.